So you made it past the gun fort, and now there's a giant monkey in your way. You tried to kill him, he's running all over the place, and maybe you even did kill him once. But then he came back, without his head, and he beat your ass. And you just can't beat it. And that's okay. That's why I'm here. Welcome to the Get Good Guide for the Guardian 8. So first, let's go over the items you should have going into this encounter. And the first thing is the spring-loaded flame vent. You can get by with the regular flame vent and oil to help light the ape on fire, but if you have the spring-loaded flame vent, you can use the flame blast technique to light the ape. Moving on from there, you're also going to want your loaded spear. It doesn't matter which upgrade tier you have, as all the spears have the drag technique, and that's what we're going to want. The last item I would consider necessary for this fight is going to be pacifying agents. You're going to either want pacifying agents, or alternatively, a model purple gourd to help stop terror buildup that occurs in phase 2. Now before you go into this fight, you're probably thinking, I'm fighting a giant beast, I should use firecrackers. And while you can, you're going to be a lot better off using the flame vent. Now for some metrics, the firecrackers will lock down the ape for roughly 5 seconds. The flame vent, on the other hand, will lock down the ape for about 6. And while this may not seem worth it for an additional one spirit emblem, the flame vent is also doing a chunk of damage and will continue to do chip damage as it burns the boss. In a fight that's all about taking down the boss's health bar, I think this makes it more than worth it. Onto the perilous attacks, the first one is a low grab he'll try and do, and you can avoid this by simply jumping backwards when you see it coming. The second is a grab from a jump, and you can avoid this by dodging backwards and holding the button down to continue your run. In addition, you can also jump towards the end of it just to maximize your escape chances. The last thing I want to talk about is his poop attack. Anytime he reaches back into his bum and grabs poop, just run on towards him and you'll be able to get some free damage in from behind. For phase two, he's going to have three perilous attacks, the first of which is a sweep. You can avoid this by simply jumping on over it when you see the arm coming at you. And the second is going to be a sweep, but this time from the air. It looks like it might be a grab, but you can avoid this by simply jumping over the blade right around the same time that he is going to hit the ground. The third perilous attack is going to involve when he begins moving his hand back to his head. When he does this, dodge backwards and hold the button to run. You can just get out of the range of this attack and avoid it completely. What you want to notice here is the movement of the head. As soon as the head starts moving back, that's when you want to dodge and begin your run. Alternatively, if you happen to be absolutely terrible at dodging and doing this maneuver, you can of course use the lilac version of the umbrella to negate out the terror damage and get a follow-up attack if you have the appropriate upgrade. The last thing I want to talk about is victory in this phase. And while we won by health in the first phase, phase 2 is going to be a death blow via posture. The main way to do this is parry those attacks, do a single swing, and then use the spear drag technique to cause a large amount of posture gain. You're going to need to practice the time your deflects here. I would suggest backing up a little bit to make the sword easier to see. But the biggest thing is this heavy downward slash that you'll see right here. By parrying this attack, you pull the ape down do free damage, or alternatively, use the spear to drag out the centipede, causing a large amount of posture damage. Now that we've gone through the strategy, let's pull it all together and show you how this boss is done. Before we begin, I also want to note that this run is on New Game Plus, which is why I have more health than you may have at this point, but regardless, the same exact principles discussed apply in New Game. And to support this, I'll also have a link to the walkthrough episode where I killed him with less health and attack power. In addition, I'm not going to be using some of the upgraded abilities I have, such as Living Force, and I'll limit my usage of Spirit Emblems. One of the biggest things in this fight is looking for opportunities to get damage in. As you can see right there, while it looked like he was vulnerable, he quickly got back up with an attack, and that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes he'll sit down, sometimes he'll try to attack quickly. Anytime he does this attack, the whole block to stop the first two hits. That arm flail attack. Fortunately, got poisoned from the poop, but that's okay. Just pop an antidote powder and be on your way. As for combat art during this fight, I haven't really discussed it, but if you have Floating Passage, it's decent. Alternatively, you should be trying to use whatever isn't going to use your Spirit Emblems, since you want to reserve those for using both your Flame Vent and your Spear.
That's going to be it for our flame vent usage. Anytime you get low, you can also run really far away to heal in this fight. You can see even though he landed on his ass, he got up very fast there. And that's why I say you want to be careful and make sure that you're looking for opportunities where you can get in damage. The poop throw is one of those best opportunities. You'll also notice that getting damage into his head causes him to stagger every now and then, giving you a window that you can get damage in. With phase one down, we're on to phase two. If you're worried about the Terra buildup, you can also preemptively use a pacifying agent just so you have a little bit of resistance to get it in the event that you end up getting caught by it. Another thing to point out, if you're having trouble avoiding, you can also rope onto these to quickly gain the distance you need to avoid his terror house. Now, as for his basic movements here, aside from getting caught in the face by that, uh, anytime he does the run at you lunge move, you just want to run alongside of him. Right here, just circle around, get some free hits in on his bone. All I'm doing right there is hitting right trigger twice. Once to put the spear in, once to pull the spear back. Anytime you back up from this move, it's also a great opportunity to get some healing in, as you're going to be safe while he's animation locked. While we are looking for a posture victory, make sure that you stay on the boss as well, as giving him too much time will allow him to regain his posture bar. And with that, you defeated the Guardian 8. So hopefully you guys follow these tips and join the Get Good Club yourself. Up next, we're going to be tackling the Double Ape, and then from there, moving on to the Corrupted Boss, or Corrupted Monk, and some of the later bosses. So thanks for coming by. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll catch you next time.